How's it team? Welcome back to the Sinbin. First video post lockdown. Um, if you're new around here, this is where we discuss, draw, make stuff, all things rugby related. What I did do earlier on in the year, you may have seen it, you may not have, but I made a rugby ball out of snow. This is my lockdown sort of video. I was inspired by an R2D2 hit that I did a couple of years ago. Uh, I was going to make a BB-8, but the snow just wasn't quite up to par, so it started melting quickly. There you go. But I figured we'd keep on the same vein, largely because I, I, I checked it out and it doesn't appear as though it's been done before. Well, not quite to the same exacting standards as you could come to appreciate from this and bin. Uh, ordinarily, what I'd be doing at about this stage is flashing out the old pad, drawing something. I did start drawing, it's like I haven't I haven't not been doing anything over the past wee while. I did start doing a couple of art pieces indoors, but her indoors, she decided to go and post it onto her Facebook, so that kind of kiboshed that video. I'll do something with it later on down the track. But essentially what I wanted to do today was see whether or not we could make one of these I won't go through the gory details of ripping the ball apart, but essentially, once you have cut off a segment, what you want to do is you want to chop off the excess vinyl around where the thread is. You'll come to appreciate as well as soon as you've got this segment that it's not perfectly flat. Now that's not a big problem. All you have to do, grab a marker or a pen of some description, draw lines from towards the middle there, out towards the edge, and then just cut. Once you've cut it, give it a lay down, see how flat it is. If it's working, brilliant. If you don't want to tear apart a ball, don't worry. I'll add a template in the description down below. But once you've got that piece cut up, trace around it on a piece of cardboard. Now you're going to have to do this four times, obviously. Use something sharp, if you like, to get in there, just to make sure that you can get them nice and uniform. Cut out the outside edge. If you're awesome like me, just do that. And what you want to do is you want to bend them slightly as well, just to make it a bit more easy to do this gluing process. Now, this part here, essentially all you're doing is you're forcing the two corners together. Now it'll naturally make the ball itself, or the piece of cardboard itself, want to curve. That's fine. Perfect, that's exactly what you want to do. Now once you've got all four pieces glued together, grab two of them and do exactly that. Now what I did was I grabbed two of them, glued a little bit, then I grabbed the other two bits, glued a little bit, then I grabbed the, the previous two bits, glued a little bit, and so on and so forth. Do this all the way. Make sure you do this until you've got it all joined across from one corner to the other and you'll end up with two halves. Now once you've got the two halves, obviously try to give it a wee bit of a stretch because they will want to close up together. Um, I just laid it down on the table and pushed the two ends together. But once you've made it a little wee bit more malleable if you like, stick the two ends together, both sides, and then along one side, essentially, just close it up. Do it bit by bit. Now I thought to myself at this stage here, what I might do is grab the bladder out of the last ball. Put a hole in the ball, somewhere along the middle there. Um, this is going to be where you're going to put the nozzle for the pump. So I've got the needle valve there, I stuck it inside the ball. Once it's inside the ball, add the, the nozzle so that you can pump it up. Be a bit of a, bit, bit of a 
hard task towards the end there. Um, but that's not too much of an issue. Once you manage to get it stuck down, what I'd suggest is moistening the ball. Um, only because experience has proven to me that blowing up dry cardboard is not necessarily the best plan of attack. But I did it anyway. Now what I noticed as well, when I started pumping up the ball, was that the cardboard does take shape. It does also creak and pop and make noises. Now when you're at this stage, you might want to come along and do some paper mache along the edges. That's fine. Uh, what I also did was I ripped out the guts because, well, it had a hole in it. Um, so it was just rattling away in there. However, if you don't like the look of this ball, there are other stages. Quite difficult, but nothing's impossible. Here in the sin bin, we like making the impossible unimpossible. So, what you want to do is you want to get some ripped up egg cut, and I had some left over from the, uh, well, from the homeschooling that I did with the kids. Uh, I, also, I also added a few rose leaves that I had dried up. They were for another project that I'm going to be working on further down the track, but. Now, once you've got it all poured in there with some hot water, blitz it. You've got to do some serious blitzing. You blitz, and you blitz hard. Blitz like you have never blitzed before. All right. Once you've blitzed enough, and I think I've blitzed enough here, all you got to do is pour it through a strainer into a pot and let it drain for a good wee while. Essentially, you know, five ten minutes. That's fine. Uh, what I didn't know was that my drainer was touching the pot, so it wasn't draining terribly fast at all. Anyway, once you've done that. Give it five, ten minutes, then give it a squeeze and add it to another container for yourself so that you'll be able to further down on down the track and mix it together. Now, PVA. PVA is about to become your best friend. Mix it all together quite nicely. Don't worry, it's not going to dry up on you. In fact, it takes a good maybe half a day for the ball to dry. But once you've got the mix to a consistency that you like, start spreading it across the ball. Now this, this phase here, this phase here, take your time. There is absolutely no rush, and it's kind of important as well. I know it's sped up in the video, but this took me about half an hour, and I only managed to do two sides with this one mix, so you're gonna have to do it all over again anyway. Once you've got a healthy lather of mix onto the ball, just give it a wee bit more shaping. Once you've done that, Cover it all over again with some more PVA. I don't know why at this stage I decided to cover it with more PVA. It just seemed like better safe than sorry. You know what I mean? Now also remember, what you do on one side, you have to do on the other side as well. Now, what I've done is I came along and I thought I might do some paper mache myself as well, just to see whether or not it gives you the right texture. It didn't. So that's where this step comes in. So essentially, what you do on the two opposing sides, cover it with PVA glue, and then get some big serviette. Add some man tissues left over from some man flu that I had a wee while ago. It's just... Spread it so that it's got no wrinkles. Once you've got it spread and you're happy with the result, Come along with a, a pair of scissors or something sharp and cut around the edge of the ball. You can leave an inch or two um, and it doesn't matter too much about what it looks like. Then what you're going to do is you're going to come along and you're going to glue those ends down but you want to cut a strip maybe an inch or two across, uh, apart so that when it does fold down it doesn't leave any creases. Creases at this stage is the enemy. When it's all stuck down, give it another coat with some PVA and let it dry. Well, now that you've got the two opposing sides done, 
What you do on the remaining sides is give it a cover with some PVA glue and then do exactly the same thing. However, you're not going to be cutting these edges off. Get it all smooth, stuck down onto the PVA. Once you've done that, all you're going to do is come along and rip it. Now what you want to do is you want to rip it as close as you possibly can to the edge. A rip. Don't cut it. We don't want any straight cuts. What you're going to do is you're going to come along shortly thereafter and you're going to stick it down with, yep, more PVA. Once you've done this right around the edge of the ball, on both sides, what you need to do then is give the whole ball one last quick lathering What you're going to end up with is a rugby ball. Anyway, once it's all dried, get your art face on and get busy. That looks all right. I couldn't be on honestly. I honestly could not be bothered doing all three sides. I'm just what's the word I'm looking for? lazy. Seriously, that took me like three hours. Us. <sighs> anyway, that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see anything else rugby related, by all means, do leave a comment down below and we'll see what we can do. There's a cool movie coming out later on in the year and I'm going to get involved. So, fingers crossed it pans out. Anyhow, Catch you later.